So those are wonderful comments. Uh, I, it's, it's great to be um, with people who look at data in, in a way that, you know, you have to have the right amount of um, skepticism. And what I wasn't hearing from Dr. Cousins was the distinction between randomized trials and observational. And that's really, we've gotten, so. does everybody know that happy cholesterol is no longer happy? I mean, we we that was 60 years we had that wrong, that the higher your HDL, the more heart attacks you have. That came out, Can Hart and, uh, and the other uh, one in Europe, uh, Copenhagen. And, you know, it's like we have to have large, large trials and and hopefully very long lasting to try to get at the truth. And so um, when you talk about omega-3s, uh, there have been prospective randomized trials. Uh, strength trial was one of them. Reduce it was another one. The interesting part about it is that reduce it showed a, a big improvement in outcomes, but they were doing a placebo controlled trial where the placebo happened to be um, mineral oil, which turns out it's dyslipidemic. It actually hurts your risk as opposed to corn oil, which doesn't hurt your risk. And the trials that compare with corn oil found no difference whatsoever. So I think all of that area has to be redone. I know the FDA approved it, but you know they got some, you know, mineral oil pulled over their eyes uh, apparently. And there, and, and it's interesting that I think two thirds of the lipidologists say that these trials are actually, you know, not helpful, and one third of them are sticking by it. I I, I can't uh, adjudicate between them. I'm just saying, like Dr. Lone said, we said we really do need more data here. And uh, as Dr. Lim was saying. You know, the inflammatory uh, markers that get measured even after a fruit juice where the fiber went in the garbage, okay, uh, within 30 minutes, your inflammatory markers are high. And so you can't impugn carbs. You have to impugn, based on the data, refined carbs and juices and sweeteners uh, that will raise insulin and, and inflammation. And so... I'm I'm hoping that people will make that distinction and stick with a whole food plant based diet. I and you know we spend, <clears throat> um, I think it was twenty one billion dollars annually in this country on uh, on supplements that have not uh, shown any rigor in terms of proof that they actually do uh, improve human health. I bet some of them are really good. I just wish that people would, you know, do the rigorous trials and get it FDA approved. I mean, and, you know, it's a, I know that's an expensive process, but it's a rigorous process. And, and when people cross that hurdle, you can fail with a little bit of confidence. I know people are down on the FDA because they're too slow or they're on the down on them because they're too fast. Okay, well, they're doing the best they can. Um, and we like to see uh, what, and what they do demand is data. Now, what could probably 90% of the experts that you have speaking at your panel agree on. Mm -hmm. I think we could, rather than adopt a reductionist way of thinking that looks at carbs as a problem or, oh no, it's actually proteins a problem, or really it's fats that's a problem, or you know, really it's the next bogeyman that's a problem. A diet that is predominantly composed of healthy fats, proteins, and carbs based on fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains that are minimally processed. Mm -hmm. Uh, in as natural a form as possible is the is an, an optimal diet for for humankind regardless of your culture uh, regardless of your age you know regardless of your ethnic background it's it's a common denominator and then you've got all these little you know kind of controversies at the at the fringes but that is a core that i believe the vast majority of experts can agree on if tomorrow you all got back blood work what would you ideally in a perfect world want your total cholesterol, your HDL, and your LDL cholesterol levels to be? That's the first question. And then the second question is, do you recommend oils? And then the third question is, do you recommend raw seeds, nuts, olives, and avocados? So the first question is, if you what would you what would you want your cholesterol total? HDL and LDL to be, if you could have it anything, do you recommend oils and do you recommend seeds, nuts, olives, and avocados? Those three questions. Well, I would say I would like my total around 140, LDL in the mid 50 range and HDL I don't really care much about. <laughs> There's actually an interesting um, 
thing that uh, is called the HDL efflux capacity, published in the New England Journal a few, few years ago, looking at the efficiency of the HDL, not the absolute number. And it'll be interesting to ever see if the data pans out to show that that is uh, a marker that um, is not only a good risk predictor, but um, at some point a target for some intervention, lifestyle or, or other. Uh, so that's my, my numbers. Now, in regards to oils, I have a good 17 minute YouTube video going to that in detail. It's complex. And obviously there's may, many different um, types of oils, uh, some that are much higher in saturated fat, like the coconut oils and the palm oils, and some that are much lower, like the olive oils and the canola oils. Um, and I do think that, again, making a blanket statement that all oils at any amount is harmful for you and should be completely eliminated all the time in every single person is not appropriate to make, because obviously there are many people that consume oils and still live long, healthy lives. Not that we should use anecdotes, we should use science to make our decisions. But the way I kind of uh, think about it is any amount of saturated fat raises LDL. Every oil has some degree of saturated fat. Yes, olive oil might only be 15%, et cetera. Look at your numbers. If your LDL is controlled, if you're doing great uh, and, and you can maybe tolerate small amounts of olive oil because you, you're at your ideal body weight, you have no uh, infl inflammatory markers that are elevated and your LDL is controlled well, I'm sure you're going to be able to tolerate a little bit of oil and you should be fine. Uh, granted, it's very calorie dense, leads to weight gain. And uh, many oils are more uh, higher in the omega-6s, which are more pro-inflammatory potentially and higher in the saturated fats. So the oil question, I think most people need to at least dramatically reduce, if not eliminate, but look at your numbers uh, and see where your numbers are to determine, it, can I tolerate little bits of olive oil? And honestly, similar to the salt in the McDougall program that Dr. Lim spoke to, little bits of olive oil on a whole food plant-based diet can help some people maintain it much better in the long term than others. And as long as your numbers are okay, I don't think it's as devastating. And I'm sure Dr. Williams will speak to some of the more recent science that's been published in, in that regard. And then lastly, nuts, seeds, avocados, I'm assuming you're talking about whole plant foods that are higher in fat. And I, I think that this whole uh, idea was popularized that you should eliminate these foods based on more Ornish and Esselstyn. People are trying to reverse heart disease, uh, et cetera. I would give a similar answer in that if you have severe coronary disease and you needed you know, and it's, it's you know, multi-vessel severe stenosis, and you're trying to do every single thing possible to stabilize it and reverse disease, et cetera, then being as strict as you can might make some sense, even though there's still individual variability, just like with the oils, look at your weight, look at your LDL, look at your inflammation, and use that as a guide to help determine, can I tolerate, you know, eating some nuts and, and olives? Of course, walnuts higher in omega-3s might be a little bit better, is what people prefer using ground flax seeds uh, to get your omega-3s, even though they're short chain. It's still technically in that category, you know, uh, where it's higher fat. Uh, would be the preferred sources to, to try to go for. But um, if, as long as you're a healthy person and your numbers are good, having small amounts of the plant fats certainly are not going to be a problem. The issue is Esselstyn always says fat is addictive. It's, it's you know, people always go nuts on the nuts. They eat too much and it's hard to really restrict. They eat two avocados a day or whatever. It leads to weight gain and it might not be good. You just got to look at your own numbers and your own situation. <laughs>